If you're ready to experience more peace and joy in your life, if you want to feel more comfortable in your own skin, and if you're ready to discover and expand on your energetic gifts and personal power, you're in the right place. So here's your host, Kelly Sparta. Welcome back to Spirit Guides. I'm your host, Kelly Sparta, transformational shaman, spiritual coach. I am here, as always, with my co-host on Mondays, Joshua Radawan, amazing reader and coach and ritualist and writer, author, just all sorts of cool stuff. So we are talking today about who the fuck am I? Finding your authentic self. Now, for those of you who thought that you listened to this episode before... And then realized that it was another episode that we had already posted. Yeah, that happened. So my my assistant made a mistake, uploaded the wrong thing. Nobody noticed and it all got published. And so, and then she proceeded to delete the file. And here we are, we were having to re-record the episode. So, you know, my apologies for not being right the first time around. And, you know, yay for new new shows and new new systems and you know, we're getting things right and this won't I, happen again. I mean, it's a figures. little, let's be honest. It's a little funny that it's the magic and manifestation episode, isn't it? <laughs> the one that got published twice. Yeah. It manifested yeah. itself it's into like, the the rotation twice. How powerful is yeah, that? Like, clearly you needed to hear it twice is really what it came down to. Because even Josh didn't notice he'd listened to it twice in three weeks. I so, did. you know, there's, there's all these things. So everybody everybody's brain snafued to the point where you guys got to hear that episode twice. So you must have needed it is all I can say, because with the systems I have set up, that should never happen. So yeah. Anyway, we're, we're doing this episode again. And clearly we needed to do this again because clearly we needed to say different things. Cause I am remembering in this moment that we had notes that we were working off of last time and now we are not. So this is going to be more channeled than the last one. So clearly there was something that needed to be said. So raw from yes, raw yes. from spirit. <sighs> so, you know, I'm going to tell the story. I'm, I, you've probably heard it a few times by, well, maybe not yet. I've, You'll, you either have or you will, but I, I don't know. I'm recording so many episodes at once. I, can't, I don't know where anything is in the sequence. But anyway, this is not the only time you will hear this story, but it is an important story. And so I want to tell it to you again, which is that my friend Kathy has this beautiful metaphor for finding your, yourself. She says that we are all artisanal wells, springs, springs that spring forth from the ground. We are the water in the spring. And over time, life our parents, culture, our experiences, our beliefs put garbage in the well. And over, over enough time, the garbage weighs down the well enough that the water will not, no longer spring forth. And then it weighs it down even more and it becomes a, a space. There's, there's space for rain to gather in that well. And we begin to believe that we are the rainwater in the well. And then that means that if it doesn't rain for a while, we feel like there's a very limited life available because we have very little water to work with. And if it rains a lot, then we're like, oh, we have more to work with. We feel more abundant. But it is all a function of illusion of us believing that we are the rain because we have never been the rain. We are the water underneath the garbage. And so the key to finding your authentic self is to pulling the garbage out of the well because you're not broken, you're not lost, you're just weighed down. And so I love this metaphor because it is so perfectly reflective of what is true in the spiritual world. Because people come in going, oh, I'm, I feel broken, I need healing, I need this, I need that. It's like, mm, sort of. What you really need is to dig the garbage out of the well. Because that garbage is what stands between you and your authentic self. That garbage is what stands between you and feeling like you're healed, right? You ultimately are already healed, <clears throat> you know? It's just releasing the beliefs, the illusions that say you're not, you know, that's, that's, the, that's the actual path. And, you know, we buy into these illusions just like we buy into our, our identities, right? You know, yeah, go ahead, Josh. So so on point with what's been going on, you know, like, you know, I've been working with you, what, three, four years now. And, you know, there was a lot of garbage in there, <laughs> you know, and, and it's, it's, it was really over the last two months, really, really heavily the last two weeks that, 
you know, some of this deeper stuff that was really shoved down there started coming out of that, you know, like my, my, my belief structures. And, you know, I was like, this is how I've always operated. This must be how it is, you know, like, but, but then, and, and I was basing some of that on real life experience, but still a lot of my father's voice from my, my childhood, like that, that, you know, that, that heaviness, that judgment, that this is the only way I know the only way this, you know, it, it, there was so much in there still, even after the forgiving, the healing, the writing about it, still there was some more. And I've always struggled with my crown chakra. You know, this, you know, like, it's like, you know, I have that mind on overdrive. So much of it's been filled up with voices from my childhood, you know, still affecting me to this day, you know, but it's, it's because of this work, we take it out little by little. So it's not like, ah, you know, like, you know, just a, a full blown, you know, spring popping up when you're not used to that, you know, it's, and, and the, the beauty of being able to dig this up little by little, this, this is the place that we get to coach from, right? You know, like this is because we go through this process ourselves on a very, very deep level, offered often deeper than our students, which I wish I would have known before I started writing classes. But <laughs> you know, <laughs> yeah, because of that, we have a, 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 you know, a different place to teach from because we've really gone through all the, the, the shit, you know, within ourselves. So, yeah, I just wanted to share that. Yeah. Well, and, and that's totally true. I mean, I recently like, I don't know, a week ago week and a half ago, <clears throat> broke through a belief structure that I have had in place in my business since 2005 or six. And it was severely limiting my business. It was hamstringing me in a big way because <clears throat> it got put in place at the same time as I was going through this, I mean, one of the things that my students go through and one of the things that I went through is this sense of superiority, right? We, we feel inadequate. And so we in, embrace this superiority aspect because we are better in a lot of ways because we work a lot harder than a lot of ways than other people because, you know, we, we try to be perfectionists and, you know, we're control freaks and all the things. And so we, we get things, you know, we can get more done in a day than most people get done in a week, right? We're just like, bang, 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 do it mode, do it mode, emergency, do it mode. And we wonder why our adrenals are exhausted, you know, but, um, <clears throat> so we embrace this, the superiority complex to compensate for the not good enough piece. And I did that early on in my business career in this business around, it was around internet marketing because it was very early in internet marketing. I had, I built my first website in 2004, right? So it was very early in the internet marketing era and I would hire people and they wouldn't know what the hell they were talking about. <clears throat> and I would know they wouldn't know because I'd been doing the work myself and I knew how to do it. And they would come in and say, oh, we're going to do this. And I'm like, that's not going to work. <laughs> like, what, what made you come up with that? You know? And so I, I went into that and I stuck with it and I got into this space where I was, I just had the inherent belief that nobody in marketing knew what the hell they were talking about. And so over the last 20 years, I would hire marketers and I would pay, pay anywhere from small amounts to very large amounts of money and get nothing because I would manifest people who didn't know what they were talking about because that was my belief structure. And even if I would vet them and whatever, it just would not work. <clears throat> and even if I did happen to get somebody who knew what they were talking about, it wouldn't work for me, right? Because my belief structure and my manifestation skills are amazing, right? So I ended up having to do it all myself, right? And so I broke that a week and a half ago. And I'm, I can actually see the difference so when you run a business and you're on LinkedIn for any length of time, you get solicited multiple times a week by people trying to get you to hire them. And I can see the, the difference in the quality of the solic solicitations I'm receiving now versus the ones that I got three weeks ago. Three weeks ago, I was getting the people who didn't know what the hell they were talking about. And today I'm like, oh, yeah, you actually have a clue. That's I very that interesting. I finally let that go. I think that came up in an energy review you asked for a little bit ago. You, you gave me a piece of that, you know. I, I actually put this out to my students because I, I was wrestling with a couple of different issues going on at the same time. 
and as a practice session for my students, because they're learning how to do business energy reviews, um, I said, okay, here's, here's the thing. And I, each of them gave me a different piece of the puzzle. And your piece was, was right on target for what, what I just talked about. And I realized I haven't come back to you with that because we haven't had a call about it since then. <laughs> but, I was trained um, by the best. <laughs> <laughs> I accept uh, your love yeah, first. <laughs> 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 so this this thing broke open and and I can feel the shift in my business. It's a significant shift in my business. And I've I've had somebody reach out to me who wants to partner with me and I've got I've got a whole bunch of different things going on. So it's it's amazing how getting clear about who you are and what your garbage is, right? Can can impact your ability to stand in your authentic self. And so, you know, when people ask me what their purpose is, I say it is the fullest expression of your authentic self. That is the definition of your purpose. And so when you know clearly who you are, you will know what you are meant to do. <clears throat> and that is the, the foundation of everything. You know, I, I had a similar experience. You know, I, I remember really, you know, like when I came to you, like I was in rough shape from, you know, years of, well, the, my own shit, entity shit, and, you know, shit from all around just a whole pile of shit yeah. <laughs> and uh, you know it was it was it was a talk with a gentleman that i had at a place i was working at the time he's like he was very you know he had a narcissistic undertone but he was very confident and i was like and he was very very good at his job but he's like i've solved your problem he's like you need to practice megalomania and i and i did for a while you know i was like i am the best at everything and i just started celebrating myself but same thing you know like i find that 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 was part of my path of finding my authentic self is I was like, this is, you know, where I was. And then, you know, I kind of tipped the scales. And I noticed in, this in a lot of my chakra work too. Like I will go from underactive to overactive until I find the balance of who I, who I want to be, you know, and, you know, like, and it's, it's a, it's an interesting process to undertake, but you know, like when you become aware of like, okay, that's too much, that's too much. You can really start to balance out uh, a little bit quicker. Not saying that we don't ingrain some longer lasting belief systems that, you know, take a little bit of digging to get to, but you know, that's been my process in finding my authentic self. Yeah. <clears throat> and I love the fact that he, he was like, you know, you need to practice being a meg megalomaniac, which is that I, I actually, you know, we do work in our program around, you know, building up belief structure in yourself and, and being able to, to make a list of all the things that you've done well and things like that. And so that's, that's kind of the same thing in a different fashion. You know, yours is, was more of a do it with abandon. And, you know, I kind of love that actually. I really do. I kind of love that. I don't it, know if people would do it. They, they fight against the things that I have them do now. You fought against the thing. So explain oh. this to me because you Go fought ahead, against that exercise <laughs> and you've done the megalomaniac thing. Explain to me the difference for you. So there's a certain exercise in Kelly's class where, you know, we kind of gather all the nice things about ourselves. And it was the one assignment I didn't do in my whole, you know, first program with her. Uh, and, and it was the one she says, you have to do this eight times throughout the program. I bet you it's in there eight times. I didn't do it. I was like, I don't know about this. It makes me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> and then it wasn't until, you know, I stepped into the, 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 you know, deeper work with her in the second program. I was like, oh this is pretty valuable work. And yeah, I, I was just super resistant to it. And she knows it, you know, she knows all the lessons that like all of her students, because it's probably the one she was resistant to. I don't know. I'd, I've always wondered that, you know, like, because, you know, there's, no, there's usually other... the ones that people don't do. Yeah. Yeah. I suppose. <laughs> I suppose. Okay. Yeah. Every time somebody won't do it, I add another piece saying, no, really, you need to do this. <laughs> And it, it, it's funny because I entered the second program and, you know, some similar stuff. We're working with some of the same concepts from the, the first program. And I was, you know, like, I, I remember on the call, I was like, Kelly, I just want you to know, after two years, I have finally done the, you know, the, 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 the assignment. And you're like, it's about time. <laughs> <laughs> But you were okay with stepping into the megalomaniac thing. So tell me the difference for you, because I, this is, I, this is, I don't know that I was, I don't know that I was fully okay with it. You know, it was something, okay. you know, like, like I tell everybody, you know, like my life's a social experiment for the most part, I'll try just about anything, <laughs> you know, like what's, what are we down here? Probably just learning for source anyway, you know? So 
you know, I, I, while, while I utilize that, there's always like the questions in the back of my head at the same time. Like, even though I'm like, I am great. I'm, you know, like the question, it's not like those questions went away, you know, like, but the difference between that and, you know, the, the assignment that we're talking about is that, you know, now I can see it and it came from other people and not from inside me. Right. Like it was it was an appreciation from outside instead of like this false bra bravado is what it felt like when I was, you know, flirting with that. If that makes sense. Gotcha. OK. Yeah. So, yeah. <clears throat> and this is no. the thing is that when anytime something you're doing feels false to you. And this is my biggest challenge with people in affirmations is that, you know, they're like, oh, you know. I'm doing this, but your bullshit meter goes off every time you do an affirmation. You know, it's like you, your, your lived reality is different than the affirmation that you're saying. And so I, you know, I always have a challenge with things like that. It's like, okay, <clears throat> I get it. So you have to get into a place where you fully believe what you're saying, but that's difficult to do when you're new to the process. Right. And so, <clears throat> and yet at the same time, your brain doesn't know the difference between what you imagine and what is in front of you. So literally, if you imagine working out, your body will actually build muscle mass that they have proven that in studies. Right. And so you, you, there's, there's both sides to that. Right. But when you are doing work around finding your authentic self, it's never about pretending right? Because it, it's about who you are. It's about allowing. It's about letting go of resistances and self-abuse and limiting beliefs and negative talk and things like that. Negative self-talk and your inner judges, right? But it, it is not about pretending to be somebody you're not, right? It is, it's about being able to admit who you are, because most of us have been trained to think that we're terrible people. And that either comes through our upbringing or through the church with original sin and you can't, you can't recover from it. And there's just this inherent thing, you know, in Western culture, we are brought up to believe that we are sinners at, at heart and that we have to, you know, surpass our, our baser nature. And it's like, well, you know, you know, do we all have things that, that call us to our baser nature. Yeah, we do. Some of us may give into them at different times. All of us may give into them at different <laughs> times. Let me say that. <laughs> um, <clears throat> because we all do, but that's part of being human. And that's part of the thing is, is letting go of that need to be superhuman, to be per perfect because per perfection is a state of stillness in the universe and the universe is the only constant in the universe is change. So if perfection does not exist for more than a briefest fleetest moment, and then it's gone because all the circumstances have changed. And so, you know, trying to be perfect is trying to be impossible, right? It's just, it's, it's, it's just too hard. So, you know, a lot of this is, is about removing the belief structures that we are holding that are keeping us from feeling comfortable in who we are. And the, the core of who we are is so much better than we give ourselves credit for. And so, you know, doing the work to pull those, those pieces of garbage out of the well that are holding down the beautiful spring that is you is really worthwhile work. <clears throat> and are some of those pieces of garbage decayed and, and nasty? And will the, the goo get under your fingernails? Absolutely. Absolutely it will. And will some of them be repeated multiple times throughout the garbage clean out where there's layers of the same type of garbage going down? Absolutely. That will happen too. Because those are our core issues. Why? I don't like it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I can't tell you how many times I was like, I have done this work before. Like, why is this showing back up? It's always about a new perspective on it. You know, it's in pulling, pulling that deeper stuff Think of stuff each out. piece of... Yeah, think of each piece of work that you have to repeat the the stuff about the same thing. You're never repeating the exact same thing. You're no. repeating it at a different level, right? And but if you think of each one of those things instead of a an obstacle to be overcome, if you think of it as a teacher who loves you, I do. Then I, it helps. 
I, I do have a lot of gratitude for the lessons. At the same time, I'm like, am I manifesting more of those harder lessons? <laughs> I mean, I ask myself that. I mean, it's a very real question. Um, I, I, I want to say, you know, like, you know, with the title, who the fuck am I? There was a time last year, you know, I was really sitting with that for a long time. You know, like I would, I would meditate and just say over and over and over, who am I? What am I doing here? Who am I? What am I doing here? Who am I? What am I? I mean, like hours, you know, seems crazy probably to the outside person, but it was something that I needed to discover within myself. And, you know, it's been an, through that process, you know, it really did kickstart some new avenues to look at, you know, and, you know, in correlation with the program, which I think that was the next week's lesson, because that's how the morphic field works. <laughs> so. Yeah. Well, and, you know, there's a, when we're doing identity work at that level and asking the who am I question, right, we're really digging deep into our belief structure and, and we're letting ourselves look at <clears throat> what is the, the, foundation on which we build our identity. And so, you know, if you're doing that work at a deep enough level, you'll start ripping out your foundation. You'll start ripping out the cornerstones of what you believe to be true about yourself. And I did that. We call that foundational deconstruction here. And I did that at such a core level and in the early, in the very early 2000s that I was non-functional. Like I would not get behind the wheel of a car because I was not in my body. And I would get out of the shower with shampoo in my hair because I, my body had no rote <laughs> skills anymore. I mean, think about it. You can get in the shower, shower, get out and do it entirely without paying attention to it because you do it so much that it's rote. All my rote skills were gone. If I wasn't paying attention to what I was doing, it would not get done. And so I would get out of the shower and go, wait, why is there shampoo in my hair? <laughs> or I would forget to put toothpaste on my toothbrush. Or I, and I literally didn't know where my edges were. I would run into doorways as I was walking through them because I didn't know where my body was in the, in the world. And I was just so disoriented because I had no foundation for my identity. And so I didn't have any way to be. And so I sat in that space for like three weeks not able to function. <clears throat> and I was like, Oh, okay. So yeah. And I had to wait for myself to recoalesce. And I tell people going through this process, do wait for yourself to coalesce. Do not try and force it because you're, if you force it, you're going to do it with your head and your head still is holding on to the beliefs of who you used to be. And it'll put back in place things that don't have to be there. And if you wait for it to coalesce, then your new state of being is building that new foundation and it will coalesce in a much healthier fashion. And so I had to wait. And when I, when I recoalesced, I realized that one of the cornerstones of my existence that got left out was perfectionism, was doing everything to a hundred percent. And I was like, I was floored because I was convinced that that was a core element of who I was. It had to be perfect. Right. And you know, I, I gave myself permission to be human shortly before all of this stuff happened and go figure that went away <clears throat> because perfectionism is not being human. Right. I wanted to share one little piece cause I am getting called to, you know, if, if you heard what I said about, you know, you know, asking that question, who am I? What am I doing here? Don't ever, ever do this if you're on the verge of burnout, because I did. <laughs> and, you know, like Kelly's seen me through the burnout phase a couple of times throughout our process together. And I'm always like asking her these existential questions because I am in burnout and way off into the mystical land of I am not coming back and I have no idea where I am. <laughs> she has walked me through that a couple times. So I, I really recommend and I'm getting called to share that, you know, don't do that, you know, until you're ready for that, those answers, those, those questions, you know, that's a very deep level, you know, process. So, and, and, you know, we are all burned out here from time to time in the United States. So, you know, we, we work with a lot of people in burnout, don't we, Kelly? Yeah, that's, there's a reason why there's an entire section in the system around burnout and recognizing it because most, most people don't even know how to recognize that they're burned out. So, but yeah, I mean, it, 
you really do need to know yourself and know how you're operating, know whether or not you're on the edge of burnout, know what's going on inside of you to know how deeply you should dive in any given scenario. Uh, when Kathy and I do transformational retreats, uh, one of the things that we talk about in the beginning is, look, this is a container for this transformation. You can engage it at a, a very shallow level if you have a very busy life that you have to go back to and you're on the edge of burnout and whatever. We recommend you take the shallow level because that's what you can hold. Or you can do a medium level or a deep level. If you do a medium or a deep level, we highly recommend that you take a day to a week off after the retreat to be able to integrate what you get. Because going back into your life after a medium to deep level dive can be jarring and overwhelming. <clears throat> and so, you know, we talk to people about this because, you know, you have the right to titrate what you're getting. You do not have to go full bore on everything. No, I'm going to say like that again for you, right Josh. To me. I know you were going to say <laughs> Because I was like, is there a deeper level than deeper? Because <laughs> you know me and I'm coming to the retreat. I was like, well, I could probably take another <laughs> week after that. You know, like, what do you got? <laughs> let's let's get in there. Let's do some oh, deep. Oh, God. I knew that. <clears throat> I knew that. That's why I was about to say it again to you. I've seen you, you look right at me. Time, every time. <laughs> And I, I have full compassion for it because I, I am you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> like, you made the deepest dive. I want to go. What do you got? Let's see. I made it this far. <laughs> <gasps> Bring it on. <laughs> Old school warriors reunited and yet another life. <laughs> <clears throat> and I will say that it is the not kinder, gentler path. <laughs> Not scared. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> a little bit actually. That, that's not that wasn't fully a authentic. <laughs> that wasn't fully yeah. authentic. A little bit, a little bit. Yeah, yeah. So well, the good news for you is the retreat you're coming to is not the transformational retreats I'm talking about. We're doing that's an that's an educational retreat. So we're we're good. Josh is is coming to the the uh, retreat in November in Boquete, Panama, at the Haven, which is. A, uh, it's called Adventures in Energetics, and it's a not for beginners retreat. So it's for people who actually already know how to hold their own container and know how to stand in their power and things like that. And then we're, we're doing deeper level work and learning deeper level skills. So that's an educational retreat, not a transformational one. We'll do the transformational one when Kathy's ready to do some retreats again. But the uh, <clears throat> the, the, the key here is... You know, when you're looking for your authentic self, the key is to be to look inside of yourself, right? The outside, we, we look in the outside world. We spend a lot of time like you're on this. You're listening to this podcast right now. There's there's an information gathering stage that we go through that is all about trying to orient to the spiritual world. And if you are if you get stuck in that for too long, it becomes a spiritual addiction instead of becoming an orientation. And so. At some point, you need to make the transition into looking at yourself because we begin by looking outside for the magic pill that will solve our problems and make us feel better. And then eventually we realize that we are the magic pill. And that is the transition point is that you have to recognize that you are the magic pill. You are the thing that will make the transition. You just have to be willing to look at it. And if you're going to look at me and say, I don't have the, I, I can't hold anything else. I'm already holding too much. Blah, blah, blah. You're already holding everything you would be looking at. You're already holding it. There's nothing new for you to hold. Okay. It, it there's, it, it's not that you can't handle it. You're already handling it. It's, it's inside of you. So you can stop with that resistance. Okay. That is a resistance. I can't hold more. You, it, right. You're not gonna, you're only going to let go of the stuff you already have. It's a resistance to say you can't do more. <clears throat> so just know that if you're conscious that you've got a problem with it, then you can hold it. Okay, the only time you can't hold something is if you've had a trauma where you've sheared off a piece of yourself, left it behind with the trauma, and you've repressed the memory, and you're not, you know, you, there's, if you're in therapy for active trauma, then yes, you've got something you can't hold, okay, and piece of you is, is off out of your body holding it for you, okay, but you're still holding it, just for the record. Your conscious mind isn't holding it, but your spirit is holding it because a piece of you is over there. That's why we do things called soul retrievals is to pull those things back, pull those pieces back. 
by the way, don't go pull in all your pieces back at once. That That's some serious shit right there. Every time you bring a piece back that you sheared off to hold a piece of trauma you couldn't hold at the time, you bring the trauma back with it that you need to process. So do not be doing this without support and do not be doing this more than one at a time. I went to a, an event once where a woman decided that she was going to walk people through the process of pulling back all of the, her, their lost pieces of their selves. And I was like, oh, hell no. I threw up a shield and I'm like, you can have one and you can have a small one because this is a group event and there's no support. Like I was just like, Poof, because she would have completely destroyed people's lives with that meditation. Okay. So please be careful with what you're facilitating if you don't understand what you're doing. Okay. <laughs> Don't be randomly taking other people's stuff because who knows whether or not they knew what they were doing, right? <clears throat> and certainly don't take an individual practice and apply it to a group that's not appropriate. So unless you really understand how it works and you have things in place for the group. So all of these things, right? There, there's, this is serious work and you're already holding it. You're already holding it. So you might as well just do it, right? All right, I'm going to leave you with that thought for the day. So remember that what you focus on is, is what expands. What you intend is what you create. So choose wisely. Have a great one, guys. See you next week. So that's it for today's episode of Spirit Guides Podcast. Head on over to iTunes, Apple Podcasts, or wherever you listen and subscribe to the show. Every week, one lucky listener who subscribes and posts a review on iTunes will be entered into a drawing for a $10,000 value grand prize and a private reading with Kelly Sparta herself. Be sure to head on over to spiritguidespodcast.com and pick up a free copy of Kelly's gift and join us on the next episode. Oh,